So hello everyone, welcome to our talk in this KubeCon. It's called Thanos, user the number to scale Prometheus and to make it highly available. Uh, my name is Gedros and with me I have Bram. And uh, we will talk about Thanos, which is a globally scalable, highly available Prometheus solution, which provides you uh, unlimited metrics attention. So at first we will do a short introduction about what Prometheus is, what scaling issues it has, and then uh, we are going to talk about what has been added to Thanos since the last presentation at KubeCon. So at first, let's we will introduce ourselves. So from uh, hello, my name is Prem. Uh, I am currently a software engineer intern at Red Hat. Uh, I'm working with the observability platform team. Uh, I have been an OSS contributor like with Thanos, like from quite some time, like uh, last year when I, uh, when I started my GSOC project with them. Yeah, that's all. And my name is Getris. I'm a central liability engineer at Vinted. Vinted might not be such a familiar name to you. It's just uh, it's essentially a secondhand fashion marketplace. I am part of the observability team there. I work on metrics, traces, and logging. And I'm also an uh, open source software contributor and a fan. So I started in the Thanos project a few years ago uh, as part of my work at my previous workplace. Um, and yeah, ever since then, I am involved in the project. Um, and also, I contribute uh, and maintain a, a Go library for. And for interacting with Grafana. So it permits you to uh, automate various Grafana actions in a type safe manner. So if you are ever if you ever want to do such a thing, then go to github.com slash grafana dash tools slash SDK. And finally, I write about uh, software engineering worthy related topics on my blog at gators.blog. And now we will jump uh, to the side about the Thanos project. So uh, to give you a short uh, history lesson, it, the project started in 2017 at Improbable in November of 2017 by Bartek and uh, Fabian. And it was open source from the get-go. Uh, so uh, over the years, it has grown quite a lot. Nowadays, it's a CNCF incubated project, just one step away from being a graduated project. And being an incubated project means that Thanos follows certain standards. So for example, we are vendor neutral. Uh, we have a public roadmap. Uh, we, re we review pull requests quite quickly and so on. And on top of that, we have a, quite a vibrant community. Uh, so since the last KubeCon presentation, we've gained about 2,000 new GitHub stars. Uh, we've gained 75 new contributors. Uh, since last KubeCon presentation, which means that we've grown about two times since 2019, which is pretty insane, if you ask me. And we also, we've also gained 839 new site users. So if you have a question about anything related to Fanos, then it's a very high chance that someone will be able to help you, not just from the maintainers team. And we have lots of maintainers from different companies. So, and on top of that, we have a transparent governance. So it means that not one of the companies will be able to quote unquote take over the whole project by pushing it into one direction that they are interested in. And that means that 
really anyone can come forward with any kind of idea and we will consider them that idea uh, and what's really awesome i think is that we are part of the prometheus ecosystem so we don't re-implement lots of code we tend to reuse code from other projects in the prometheus ecosystem so for example we reuse the whole from ql engine from prometheus uh, we reuse the end-to-end -end testing code from cortex and yeah it's just awesome and finally on funnels.io webpage we have a list of companies which have come which have publicly announced that they are using Thanos in production. So uh, you can see that we have really lots of popular names using Thanos. So it's not just the sheer number of users in our community, but also companies just both. But also companies are publicly announcing that they're using Thanos. That's how awesome it is. So let's do a short recap on what is Prometheus uh, and what downsides does a single node Prometheus have and, and how Thanos could solve those problems. Yeah, Thanos really loves Prometheus. <laughs> um, so this diagram shows you the different components which make up uh, a single node Prometheus. So we have the rule and alert engine, which periodically evaluates expressions uh, and by using the query engine and the local storage. And if certain thresholds are ha have been exceeded, then the alert engine sends those alerts to alert manager. The query engine is, of course, responsible for the queries. Grafana queries come to it. The scrape engine uh, scrapes uh, different endpoints. In this case, the, these are services, one, two, three, and they all expose the metrics endpoint in turn. And finally, you have the compactor, which makes the storage more efficient. <clears throat> But what happens if that Prometheus node just goes down? Well, in this case, it's a pretty bad situation to be in. And it could be even worse if the local storage of the first node would get destroyed. Then you would just lose all of your metrics of that single instance, of that single Prometheus instance. Uh, how how in the vanilla Prometheus world you would solve this problem? Well, you would uh, scrape the same metrics from one or more Prometheus instance. But then it has its own downsides. For example, the same time series would be more or less stored on both nodes, which means uh, duplicated data and and you would have to retrieve two times more data when curing, which is also pretty bad. And what if, for example, some of the Prometheus instances would not be able to scrape one or more services anymore? Well, then you would be in a very bad situation. In the Prometheus world without Thanos or Cortex, you would solve this issue most likely by having another Prometheus instance somewhere in what's called a federation mode, in which Prometheus, one Prometheus instance is scraping metrics from other Prometheus instances. And then that one Prometheus instance, which is in the which is scraping the federated nodes, would have to like all of the metrics would have to be transferred over to the central node. And you know, when you would just run into the same problems because you would have two times the same data. And if you would uh, want to avoid sending two times the same data, you would have to use some kind of recording rules and only send uh, pre aggregated data over to the Fed Prometheus, which is in the federation mode, and so on. 
So the, those issues, it's not really, it's kind of hard to solve those issues by just using Prometheus itself. And that's where Thanos comes in. And Prem is going to tell you about how Thanos solved those issues. Yeah, so uh, we are going to talk about uh, first some features of Thanos. Uh, so Thanos allows you to have global query view over your data. So uh, you can run a single query, which uh, touches like uh, all of your infrastructure, uh, like all of your infrastructure metrics. Uh, we can have unlimited retention with the help of object storage. Uh, Thanos exposes Prometheus compatible API. So you just need to, you can like uh, put those endpoints anywhere where a, where a Prometheus uh, query sub is supported. And Thanos also, uh, uh, has support for downsampling and compacting your metric data. So, uh, yeah, this is what a typical high availability setup looks like. So, uh, you have multiple Prometheus instances running, uh, which was, uh, which, which are scraping some, uh, which are scraping metrics from some cluster. Uh, you would, uh, run a sidecar along, uh, along them. Uh, it, it, the components called Thanos sidecar. And uh, you will run a central Thanos query. So uh, whenever you would query this, uh, the, the Thanos query for some data, uh, Thanos query does a gRPC uh, API call to uh, all the sidecar instances uh, to collect those data. And uh, these Thanos gRPC, uh, these Thanos sidecars uh, proxies this uh, to the Prometheus running uh, there. Ultimately, all the data get collected into Thanos query. Uh, uh, and then uh, it, it the, the query gets executed and the data and the result gets uh, returned to, for example, Grafana to show those uh, dashboards. Uh, Thanos also does like uh, 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 deduplication uh, on the fly so that if two Prometheus are scraping the same cluster, the data would get deduplicated automatically. Now uh, to, uh, to uh, add uh, unlimited retention, uh, Thanos sidecar supports uploading Prometheus blocks to object storage. Uh, all the sidecar uploads uh, the uh, uh, blocks to object storage for longer retention. Uh, moving on the next step, uh, we'll have, uh, we, we, we need some way to uh, query this data from object storage. So this is where the third component, Thanos store, store gateway comes in. Uh, Thanos store, uh, uh, is a component that sit, sits between uh, Thanos query and the object storage. Whenever Thanos query does some uh, requires some data, uh, it would uh, send a query uh, to the Thanos store, uh, like it sends a query to the sidecar. And this Thanos store would uh, get this data from object storage and return it. Uh, there is this another component called Thanos comp compactor, uh, which is like a standalone component, but uh, it runs in the background, uh, uh, regularly compacting and downsampling all those blocks in object storage. Uh, compaction and downsampling uh, improves query performance uh, 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 across the Thanos fleet. Now, uh, to reduce a lot of uh, requests to uh, object storage, we can we can run a memcached uh, server to cache those uh, cache those uh, chunks and blocks. Uh, mem uh, Memcached not only like improves the performance, but it, it also reduces the number of requests to object storage, which in turn can reduce uh, the cost of uh, the whole setup. That's what the typical like Thanos high availability setup looks like. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can uh, come on to like uh, Thanos channel on CNCF Slack or Thanos.io. Uh, next, we are going to uh, talk about some new features in Thanos. So the first feature we, we are going to talk about uh, is uh, adding support for deleting particular series. Uh, you can always delete a whole block of data uh, by just going on to object storage and deleting it. Uh, but uh, like deleting a particular series uh, was not possible uh, before in Thanos. Uh, so we have introduced a new tool called Thanos Tools Bucket Rewrite, which given a block ID can uh, rewrite that particular block. So uh, if you want to remove a time series from, from a particular block, you can just uh, rewrite that block. 
the Thanos tools bucket rewrite will create a new block since Prometheus blocks are immutable. Uh, this block will get uploaded to the object storage and the older block will get marked as uh, uh, get marked as deleted, which will then uh, uh, get which would then get cleaned up by the compactor. This this tool can uh, help you in situations when you want to delete some data uh, uh, due to GDPR regions or, or uh, similar laws. Yeah. Uh, so the next feature we are going to talk about is query frontend. Uh, as Gid just uh, told you before, we are like uh, Thanos and Cortex uh, have a lot of collaboration going on, and query frontend was a component of uh, the Cortex project, and since it has been like contributed to Thanos as well. Uh, the query frontend is a, a querying layer on top of Thanos Querier. Uh, with the help of Memcached, it can uh, do caching of uh, the queries. Uh, also, uh, whenever a query comes to query frontend, it, it splits those queries into uh, uh, time windows into uh, multiple pieces and run those queries in parallel to improve the performance. Those pieces are then uh, like cached into Memcached uh, to uh, like to improve further uh, query performance as well. And I guess I wanted to add that it not only caches the queries, but it also caches the requests of la label names and values. Yeah, so uh, uh, those label names and values get cached in there as well, which improves the like overall query time uh, from, uh, data, uh, from uh, graphing engines like Grafana. Yeah. So you get a very quick drop down of like na la label name suggestions and so on. Yeah, back to you, sorry, Prem. Cool, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, those were the major features which we uh, had like after the last KubeCon talk. Uh, now we are going to talk about what's, uh, what's in store uh, for future in Thanos. So uh, recently there have been a lot of improvements around multi-tenancy capabilities of Thanos. Uh, this includes uh, making the components tenant aware in a sense, so that we can include, uh, uh, we can introduce features like uh, per tenant rate limiting into Thanos or uh, tenant aware uh, resource uses uh, observability. So uh, this this also uh, in uh, this also builds upon the existing multi-tenant capabilities of Thanos receiver, uh, which is like already multi-tenant. Uh, we, this this comes us to like the next point. Uh, we we are doing some work towards maturing like Thanos receive component. Uh, this work includes making Thanos receive easier to operate. Uh, so uh, there there has been recent uh, work around uh, splitting Thanos receive into two components so that uh, it, uh, it is easier to uh, operate and making it more resilient by introdu introducing things like shuffle sharding and improving its uh, memory footprint etc. Uh, we are open to uh, all your ideas as well. You can uh, go on to Thanos GitHub repo and file a feature request. And uh, we also run uh, Thanos contributor office hours every week. Uh, in these meetings, you can uh, come and uh, like come to a video call and discuss about uh, Thanos related projects. Or if you are like contributing and you are blocked somewhere, you can uh, discuss those things as well. Uh, we organize these contributor office hours uh, in both Europe and uh, USA time zone. So uh, no matter where you are, you can uh, uh, meet us like in, in two weeks. Uh, the maintainers uh, join these contributor office hours regularly to uh, get feedback and answer questions. Yeah. Uh, the next thing we are going to talk about is uh, about mentorship programs. Thanos has been continuously participating in uh, uh, LFX and GSOC mentorships. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, cool stuff implemented by the uh, mentees. Uh, I was also a, a mentee for Thanos during GSOC 2020. Uh, and uh, uh, so like some currently ongoing uh, projects uh, in, in Thanos by, by the, uh, as part of the mentorship programs are uh, like multi-tenant instrumentation in Thanos. So this involves uh, uh, like ans uh, answering questions that which tenant used how much resources uh, from Thanos. And this is the part of the like bigger multi-tenant uh, movement going, uh, going around Thanos. The next project is to uh, 
uh, make the ruler stateless. Uh, this would allow uh, making the ruler more lean and like uh, easier on memory footprint. Uh, uh, the next project is vertical block sharding. Uh, so in in uh, bigger deployments, Thanos blocks can increase like uh, a lot in size due to compaction. And uh, uh, and in those places, we somehow need to limit the size of the block and then maybe split bigger blocks into smaller ones. And this is the uh, project ongoing uh, to do to do exactly that. Uh, the next project is implementing exemplars API inside Thanos. So due to the recent addition uh, in Prometheus for uh, the exemplars uh, support, uh, Thanos is now planning to uh, extends uh, extend its internal api to support exemplars as well so uh, we can support the same api from thanos so if you are looking uh, uh, into using exemplars with prometheus and you are uh, using thanos you would soon be able to uh, use exemplars along with thanos as well so uh, thank you that was all uh, if you have any thank questions you. yeah uh, you can ask and uh, if uh, if we, we are not able to answer them now. Uh, you can uh, always go into like thanos.io and come on to like our Slack channel to ask.